Okay, today on the show, we have Carol Horsford from a Farnham Group in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, let me tell you a little bit about <laughs> Carol's waving, so thank you. Uh, Carol originally was working in New York City in luxury goods and marketing, um, and she has been in the real estate industry in New Haven, uh, Connecticut, since 2007. She started her own brokerage in 2012. Um, she specializes in property management and investment sales, and and most impressively to us, she is the number one uh, rental agency in the state of Connecticut. Um, please visit Carol at Farnham Group. That's F A R N A M Group.com. Uh, Carol, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. We're, uh, we're really excited to have you. I uh, was telling Carol prior to us getting on board that I have been to New Haven and I've eaten the famous, I forgot, Pep Pepe's? Pepe's. Pepe's Pizza. Um, and I, I really enjoyed my time in New Haven. Um, but I, I only have been there a couple of days all total. So I should, uh, next time I'm around that area, I'm going to swing by and <laughs> go get some more pizza, I think. But yeah, I'd love to meet you in person. Yeah, that would be fun. Well, thanks. Thanks for being on the show. Um, you are, are, you have the number one rental agency in all of Connecticut, which is huge. I would like to go all the way back to the beginning of your real estate career because you, you've really, you've been in business for some time, but you've had incredible success uh, in that time. And so I'd love to go all the way back to the beginning. Tell us how you got involved in real estate. Okay. So I'm from New Haven. My dad went to Yale and I was working in New York City and I, I got married and I quit my job in New York and moved back to, to New Haven. And I grew up in this big house that was called the Farnham House, which is why I named the company the Farnham Group. Because the Farnhams actually built the house I grew up in when they donated their house, which is now the Yale University President's Mansion on Hill House. So, Farnham to me is like a classic New Haven name and it's uh, and and there's several streets named Farnham and there's like a Farnham neighborhood house so I really wanted to brand something that was uh, uh, New Haven and that was home right so I grew up in the Farnham house so yeah Farnham that's group, near and to dear me. to your so so you grew up in the house that is now the the president's uh, house or, or different big, house? They gave that mansion to the to the president, and then okay. they built the house I grew up in in 1934. It was wow. yeah Douglas Orr Architecture. So here's the story about how I got into it. When I got married yeah. and moved back to New Haven in 2007, uh, my mom had turned the big house into a B and B. Sure. So a bed and breakfast, and there was this rabbi who lived down the street who had six kids. And one day a baby got loose. One of his sons got loose and just like uh, walked down the street and uh, we rescued him and yeah. brought him inside, immediately called the cops. We didn't know any neighbors with kids. Yeah. And then he drove down the street in a Range Rover saying, did anybody see a baby? And of course, like <laughs> we had him. So he came in and was like, hey, you, you worked in New York City. You know, I, I own this large property management company. Come, come work for me. So we had brunch the next day. And he hired me that Monday and that was, that was it. Um, he paid for me to get my real estate license and his portfolio, um, a lot of it was right around Yale University. So I sort of became a specialist in college housing. Um, and we were able to, at that time he had 500 units. We grew it up to 1200 units. And then I said, well, listen, if I can do it for someone else, I could do it for myself. So sure. that's when I left and started my own business. Wow. And, and you have a number of agents working for you now. You have a, a, a large number of agents. And we should say before I forget that if anyone is in the New Haven area that is looking for a new firm to work with as an agent, uh, reach out to Farnham. Um, they, they have unbelievable success and you, you get trained and coached uh, by, by, you know, by Carol and, and other members of their staff. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely reach out. But yeah, tell, you know, we were talking offline about, about college housing and how that has been really, really important to you and how you've seen a, sort of that trending up uh, recently. And, and you had some really interesting thoughts about it, which make perfect sense logically, but I'll bet you the vast majority of our listeners, are, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm as dumb as anybody, but um, as soon as you explained that to me, it made so much sense. So I'd, I'd love for you to talk about why you think college housing is a great investment these days and why that's really helped your business. 
Okay, so um, working at this company, which really specialized in property management, yeah. the way to make money in real estate is to find a, an investment property, multiple units, fix the units up, re-rent them for the maximum that you can, and then refinance, right? So right. working in this other company, I really learned how to do that. So when I started my own company, it was like, let's search for off-market deals, the closest to the university possible because the the undergraduate students want to live the closest sure. to, to to campus so and undergraduates will pay more money for brand new renovated apartments so the old idea of the frat house the animal house you know belushi yeah. uh movie that's over people don't really want to live like that and even in the in the 10 plus years i've been in the business it's really changed so um the 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 student, the undergrad student, their parents want a clean place. They want an air condition. They want microwaves. No more like, uh, you know, animal house. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, nationwide also college housing has gotten uh, a lot of places invest, you know, a lot of investors have gotten bigger and bigger. Virginia, Minnesota, Wisconsin, because of the new trend where the undergrads want to live in really nice places, dollars are coming in the value add products are going up and that's, and that's how you make money. So I sort of created this niche industry where one, because I saw so many apartments in the city of New Haven, I knew how to value each apartment. And then if you could value the apartment and sell someone a building and hit the exact rents that you said you would get, you earn trust of the client and then they'll do repeat, re repeated. They'll just keep repeating. And, so, and because the, the parents are likely footing the bill, there's probably not a lot of negotiation. It sort of is it kind of is what it is. And it probably it makes it renting is. it really a lot easier, I would think. Agreed. So there's, there's a difference between like group housing where you can you want to live with nine of your friends in a, in a house. Sure. And there's like the one bedroom apartments or two bedrooms. So also as Yale has gotten uh, bigger, they've opened new colleges, people still want to live off campus because then they can control what they eat, they can control who they live with and their friends. Sure. So um, the, the niche, so, so I also sell a lot of commercial buildings or multifamily residential units, uh, you know, six and up. And it's really a specialty niche and I have a great team that works with me, but to keep the landlords happy, you got to keep the apartments full. So we do a, we pre-lease everything, right? So if you right. know- Because you, you, know, you know the end date, yeah. We know when they're graduated, we know right. when they're moving on. So then you, you pre-lease the apartments three months in advance. So there's really no vacancy. That's amazing. So and we manage 600 apartments. And like right now in our stabilized portfolio, we have like three vacant apartments, even during COVID. So wow. we hustle, we work really hard to keep- the landlord's full. And if they're full, they're collecting the rent and it, it keeps them happy. And then the circle just keeps going. We sell them right. more buildings. They make more money. The rental agents make more money. Uh, the sales agent make more money. And we, and we just have grown. So when I started the, the company, I had 25 units under management and now we have over 600. Unbelievable. That's incredible. Um, and, and so, and as far as so the, one of the questions that, that maybe our listeners might have at this point is, okay, how do you find these opportunities for, for let's say, investment purposes? I, I'm guessing a lot of these buildings maybe don't hit the MLS or how are you sourcing, you know, how are you finding these sellers? So networking, like 100% networking and a lot of just cold calling. So sure. in 2012, before the market really started to pop, because things got, you know, much more expensive. So a unit you know, if there was a three family house, 50 K a door, 150 to 200,000, it was a deal. Now the same house is trading for 200 a door in 2020. So the market has really gone up and it's super stable because if you get into Yale right. or you're working at Yale, you're going to have good credit and you're going to pay your rent. So it's sure. a very, very safe environment, you know, place, place to put your money. But mostly cold calling, um, sending so you letters, never no, giving I'm up. That's how you get the deal. Never give <laughs> That's up. That's true. I just stepped all over what Carol just said. She said never giving up. Um, but but uh, as far as cold calling, so a lot of our listeners, so so we have this at our firm. So we have about 700 agents. We're in Chicago. And a lot of, so we have all these property management companies 
who have high rises, who send us their inventory. They don't list on the MLS, but we have, they send us, the, we, they call them in Chicago hot sheets. Basically it's their availability. And they send it to us on a regular basis. We put it in a database, fine. But what we try to teach our agents to do is to go get their own inventory. Um, so in a way, uh, a lot of times they're like, well, how do you do that? And, and same for your case, well, how do you find buildings to, 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 to purchase? Um, you see a for rent sign and a phone number. That, that's a phone call, right? I'm guessing that's a lot of how you do it. I think it's like determination, just sheer will and chutzpah, right? Yeah. You just yeah. you just never give up. Like even today, we have been calling this guy. We looked at a seven unit off market building today. There was, this is a first, there was grass growing out of the second floor. Grass, wow. physical grass. Wow. First time I've ever seen it. But <laughs> like landlords keep a building vacant five years, 10 years, 20 years. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know what? This girl's been calling me for three years. Let me call her back. So you meet, right. you say, here's the offer, uh, and you, you pay cash, and you close quickly. That's really how to get the clients great deals. And I think, you know, my, my clients, I started with a few, and then I built them each up. So my gold level clients each have like 50 units or plus, right? And it's also about who you want to do business with, right? Everybody wants to do business with people they want to do business with. But if you've got the deals, everybody wants to do business with you. Yeah. And, and since you're dealing with, on the rental side, since you're dealing, I would imagine a good percentage of the, the tenants are students who are probably the rents being paid by their families. You probably deal just with a lot less issues in general with respect to paying rent. And uh, I know where, where I went to college and this, I don't know if this, you'll have to tell me if this is still a thing. I went to school in Ohio at a little, uh, uh, at a college, not a little college, but a college called Miami university. And we, um, we had the, the, the animal house houses were, they were all there and you either were in a fraternity house, which was disgusting, or you were in, a, in an off um, campus house with eight or nine people crammed into four bedrooms um, with, you know, and it was disgusting too. Um, but we had to prepay our rent. I'm pretty sure our parents had to prepay six months or I can't remember what it was because I didn't take care of it. Thankfully, I was lucky enough to not have to, but I am, does that still go on or is, or is it, is it more month so to month now? We use a technology, the platform, everybody pays rent online. You can pay rent, cash, sure. credit card, check. Everything is online. Maintenance requests, online lease sure. signing when they apply for apartments. So the technology has gotten so much better that everything moves faster and everything is transparent for you, the right. property manager, for the tenant, for the tenant's parents, for the owner. You can, everybody sees everything. So I think right. that's, take, that's really you know, helped... Um, you know, people want to rent from us. And yeah. we also, you know, one of the reasons I started my own business was because I wanted to provide better customer service. And the landlord is always going to be the bad guy, kind of. Right? Of course. Of course. So um, yeah. the property manager is trying to be the good guy for the landlord and the good guy for the tenant. So we're always looking for win-win. How can we get win-win, right. right? Because it's a normal and kind of an adversarial relationship. So the property sure. manager is right in the middle. And a lot of, I think the trend in property management is changing too, from like the mom and pop who owned a 20 unit building who did it themselves to the yeah. new buyer definitely does not want to roll up their sleeves and get their, their hands dirty. So they hire a property management company. Right. They don't want the 2 a.m. phone calls for the, exactly. the furnace went out. And, and, and now, thankfully, you know, we, we live in a global uh, economy and, and, and a, a gig economy, and, and you can hire people from all over the world to take those 2 a.m. phone calls. Um, and, and, you know, I know at, at our company, we, we, I, I'm in charge of recruiting realtors to work here. I have six cold callers from not from the United States, uh, from the Philippines, who call every realtor in, in Chicago, like you guys are calling all the all the property owners and the buildings you want and, and, and trying to get them uh, interested. We do the same thing. But if we were um, to, to we, we tried to hire people locally here to do that for years and years and years and just struggled and really had a hard time finding people that could do the work. And, and now we've outsourced that. Um, and just technology and, and the technology in our case is you know, they can call from wherever uh, it's all systemized, systematized and it works. And, and in property management, we have a property management division at our company as well. And that's all systematized as well. And thank goodness. Um, 
So, but we've always, I, back to rentals, we've told all of our agents that the best thing that you can do if you're looking for rentals. So we have this massive database of all these big high rises that send us their inventory that agents can rent out and that's great. Um, and I imagine you guys have that in, in New Haven as well to some degree. Um, but what we've told agents is you have to find landlords and property managers who are just tired of renting out their own units. And that's another thing. Uh, I don't know if, 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 I know you guys are looking more on the investment side, but also on the rental side. Um, do you ever first start out renting for the landlord and then eventually, you know, uh, buy the building or does that ever happen? A hundred percent. I think it, it's yeah. all based on relationship and the way to a landlord's heart is keeping their units full. Yeah. That's like, yeah. you know, so in the beginning, agents don't like rentals, right? It's a lot right. of work. You have right. to do so much communication. You have to answer the tenant's uh, questions. You have to go back and forth. You have to sign the lease. You have to negotiate it. And the, a lot of time, the money isn't there, right? The average apartment rental in New Haven is 1300 That agent's going to make half that, right? right? And then they've got their split, depending on who rents the other side. So right. we try to run a lot of incentives. We, we love to co-broke. We're the exclusive agent for another large property management company. We don't manage their stuff, but we're their exclusive agent. So they've got another 1,200 units. So finding hungry agents is really hard. And that's interesting to hear that you cold call. What's the firm? What's your firm's name? Uh, it's called Kale Realty, Kale Like the Vegetable. So, so there's 44,000 realtors in Chicago. So we have 700, which I guess is a lot, but it's a tiny percentage. And all we do, you know, so our value add, um, not to do a commercial for us, because, you know, that's not my intention, but, but we, we pay out really high commissions and have low fees. So, so anyway, so we call and we say, here's what we do. If you're interested, let us know. But, um, but there's there's no way I could call 44,000 brokers, uh, realtors, and you know I have a, I have a team of people doing it. Uh, we, we're very soft and very hand, uh, very you know if somebody says not interested, we go great, no problem, and we you know. But um, but I, I know our owner is a multi-unit investor as well. He has about 30 properties, uh, multi-unit properties, anywhere from five to 20 units on average. And he has gotten the majority of his buildings he found by the things you were saying, cold calling, cold walking, even going from building to building going, hey, are you the owner or, you know, or, or mailers like you were saying as well. And um, you just, it's just, you just keep, you know, uh, the keep, pavement. yes, pound you pound the pavement. pavement and eventually that owner goes, you know, if it's a mom and pop in particular, you know, we're thinking of retiring and we don't really want to deal with this. But a lot of times it first starts, at least in our case with, hey, you know what, I need some help renting a couple of my units. And that's great too, because then our agents get to take advantage of that, um, which I oh, imagine- yeah. For your, great for you you got to establish trust, right? You got to establish mm -hmm. trust. Yeah. Um, so you've seen uh, over your time, you've seen a lot of agents have success. You've probably also seen agents struggle. And I'm just curious, aside from uh, determination and, and will, which of course is really the, the most important quality, um, is there anything specific to doing rentals? So, so I, what, what, I, let, me, let me actually rephrase it differently. I apologize. Um, we have always told our agents, get your own inventory um, because there is sort of a shared, and obviously there's the MLS, uh, which is shared. Then there's uh, these big management companies that don't put their buildings on the MLS, but they work with every firm in town. They don't really care. Uh, anyone can rent out their stuff. And we say, go find those buildings that people don't know about and, and try to get those listings because then you're likely to have um, units if you can convince the landlord or the owner to, to let you rent them that they're probably not working with other agents or maybe they're just going to try to rent it themselves as well. Um, so we always tell our agents, get your own inventory. And it's not that challenging if you're willing to walk around and look for for rent signs and pick up the phone. So it's personality, right? In a small boutique firm, yeah. I really hire personalities. If you've yeah. got a good personality and you're likable and you're green, but you've got good spirit, I will train you. So yeah. a lot of the, the people I have with me, they're like the homegrown stars, right? You start them, you yeah. crank, you sit there, you answer all the questions. And, and that's, you, it's really an investment, right? Your broker invests time in you. And now we're a little bit bigger, so we've got more team members. Um, but I, I would say that it's technology that can help you organize your book, right? Like there's clothes, there's property based, there's Podio, there's different softwares to help you get organized. I would also say save every contact, every person who ever calls you, tenant, potential buyer, save everybody. Even if you don't know their name, just put something in there. That's how you build your book. Text them back, get an email list, put it on constant contact. Um, 
use the technology, be likable, don't be afraid to, of rejection, right? I hate rejection, but it's like, you got to put yourself out there. You want to make money? You got to put yourself out there. Yeah, that, that's true. And I'm curious too, since you guys have, you have all these tenants and maybe, you know, I know when I was in college, I think I moved every year. I don't think I lived in the same place more than one year. So you have these tenants where at the end of their, uh, their school year, um, they have to think about next year and they probably have to make a decision that, that right around the end of the school year for the next school year, assuming they're not yet graduating. You probably have all these built in additional rentals that you get to do outside of your own portfolio portfolio just because of the tenants moving, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting that because we manage the properties and we really don't want to lose any tenants and it's our job to renew. And as sure. the market has changed in New Haven, we really have our owners back, but we lose sales all the time to tenants who are like, Hey, I'm buying something. And we're like, Oh, why didn't you use us? But we're not marketing ourselves because we feel like it's a tiny conflict of, infer- conflict gotcha. of interest. So, so if you said to the, to- if you said to the tenant, hey, by the way, if you're thinking of buying, oh, you feel like that may be doing a disservice to, to the, I see, I got you. To the owner. Now, if we started yeah. an initiative that was like, hey, we will help you find your place and get you out of your lease and make sure you don't use, lose a dime. And the landlord felt really good about the fact that Farnham was going to cover that rent. That's all they care about. Sure, sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, th- there's a new business opportunity right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how often is it to where somebody's family, um, you know, there, there's a tenant, uh, maybe the family's well to do and says, you know, instead of paying this rent, why don't we find you an investment property? Does that ever happen? Where It where definitely you- happens. Yeah. I sold a house, um, uh, a boarding house, like it was a single family house and the family bought it, turned it into a boarding house and a legal boarding house. And now it's rented to a sorority. So like the kid lived there for a little bit did the project and then we, we rented it and now it's for sale again. So yeah, definitely there's, there's, there's a ton of business. It's just like, you have to be awake 24 hours to be able to capitalize on it. Got to find good assistance. Sometimes it's like better to be a little bit smaller than it is to get every single, you know, work every single piece of business, but it's also personality based. And you just got to be driven, right? Every day you wake up and you, I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm super lucky that I found something that I'm super passionate about that literally fell into my lap. Yeah. yeah was it, I what, would also the, say with the baby. Got, yeah, I was going to say a baby crawling down the street. Uh, can you imagine what a terrifying experience uh, for, for the, uh, the, the father driving around looking for their baby. Anyway. Uh, I'm only, I'm only laughing because there was a happy ending to that story. I would not be laughing normally. For sure. Uh, for sure. But, but it's interesting. That's how life is when, when it brings you together and then, uh, you, you know, good things happen. I would also say as like advice, it takes five years. It yeah. takes at least five years. So it's like, you got to be ready. You got to put your butt in the chair and no matter what happens, don't give up good things will happen. The network will start to grow, but it it takes time. It takes time and you really got to be dedicated. And I think a lot of people give up. They give up after six months. This is too hard. But I think if sales is in your blood, the New Haven market, there's a lot of business to be done here. And I think there's, there's the investor world in New York City the cap rate is at, at two or 3%. So in New Haven, right. even if something is on the MLS and is retail priced, cap rate is 6%. So we're seeing buyers come up from New York City and, and, and where we have our New Haven buyers who would not buy something for 6% cap, the New York buyers are buying it. Right. So there's competition from New York. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, has, have you found recently, um, how has the pandemic affected your ability to, to rent? Uh, has that changed at all? Or since you're on a, uh, you know, really working mostly within the college system, has it really not been that affected or? So when it happened March 13th and Yale announced like no more in-person classes, like everybody was panicking, right? Sure. Everyone was panicking. And my job I, all I did all day was like, look at the rent collections and, and calculate yeah. people's stats. But in the end, right. like ni- we're 95% collected on, on the whole portfolio for the months of March, April, May, and June. So people paid their rent, you know, people paid their rent and, you know, we kept the buildings really clean. 
we were super sensitive to the fact if we needed to re-rent their apartments, we did um, all virtual tour tours because we had previously gone around and videotaped all the all of the units. So we had our marketing really on point. And then the tenants were so happy that we respected their COVID privacy that they sent uh, new pictures if we needed it. So I, I felt like it was a really good, um, you know, there was good synergy and we were all just trying to be in it together. And I'm almost, I'm also wondering now that people have been spending more time at home that they are, you know, even students, uh, and you've said the trend has been, re you know, over the years that students are demanding sort of higher quality uh, places to live. And I, I think the COVID thing has probably even accelerated that more, right? Because people have been spending so much time at home. I know if I would have been stuck at this house with eight guys uh, in, back in 1997, um, I would have been pretty unhappy for three months because it was a dump. And it's fun when it's a dump where you just sleep there and you go out and do other things, but to be stuck there uh, would have been really unfortunate for me. I would have been uh, not super happy. And I was happy living in a dump because I didn't know any better. Um, but had I had had to spend all that time in those, in those rooms, uh, I likely would have wanted something. I would have yearned for something a little nicer. And so I think that's really smart that you, you have uh, nicer quality places for people to rent. I imagine that trend will just continue. Right. And I also think that this coming year, people are going to make decisions differently about housing. Like, for instance, three bedroom apartments are not renting as quickly as they did last year. Normally, twos and threes rent like that. What's really renting is small studios and one sure. bedrooms. People want to live alone. They don't want to live in groups. Um, you know, convincing the landlord, hey, we need to lower this rent or you might have a vacancy come August 1st. Because all of the leases end either May 31st, June 30th or July 31st. So everything ends on a cycle. Right. Um, and we're, we're pre-leasing now. Um, I think that the, the trends are going to be people can work from home also. So they want nicer houses, right? They want nicer houses. They're going to buy nicer houses. They want ni nicer, bigger apartments. So all of those things will shift. And also New Haven is a town where the tenants don't pay the broker fee, right? It's right. paid by the owner. So that, right. um, you know, is, is different from like a New York market as well. Yeah, I've always wondered um, how much how much more difficult because in Chicago we're the same way where tenant does not pay the broker fee. Thank thank goodness because I just think oh my gosh that would make life so much harder for the broker. And I'm trying to convince them. By the way, you're going to also give me one month's rent, uh, you know, to pay my commission. So thankfully we're we're both in areas where we don't have to have to deal with that. Um, and I think New York is starting to go through some changes where that's that's now shifting because um, and Boston it, too. Yeah, Boston is another good example. Yes. I think also the, even though the interest rates are really low, people want to rent because they want mobility. We've also yes. seen a trend towards micro apartments yeah. and furnished apartments. That's a big, um, that's a, you know, 10 years ago, there were barely any short term rentals. That's why my mom turned her house into a B&B. &B. And then, you know, it, the trend sort of uh, picked up with Airbnb and furnished apartment rentals, you know, my mom sold her house, she moved into a, you know, a very small single family, but that, that trend's really affected New Haven's market as well. Short term. Yeah, that days. makes, yeah, it makes sense. We're even seeing that here in Chicago um, and, and not even necessarily with respect to the colleges that we have, just the trend in general for, for younger people to want to be more mobile. Um, they're looking for the micro apartments. We've had a number of buildings here open up with those. And also the, the shorter term leases um, is, has been really a popular trend. And I also think minimalism, like people yeah. don't want a lot of stuff. They don't fill up their houses with with crap anymore so it's like you can move you can box it up and put it in a few things that's totally changed so like the thrift secondhand market has sort of like dropped out nobody wants old wood furniture nobody wants that kind of stuff anymore no one wants tchotchkes so right i think that demographic i've definitely seen change over the past you know 15 years since i've been in the business yeah I, we, we've what we've seen it here in chicago uh shift as well and then also you know, I think a lot of times our listeners who are realtors from all over the country and, and even internationally uh, think, oh, well, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to do some rentals in between sales, but I don't have anyone looking for an, uh, I don't know any renters. And we always say, start with the owner. The owner is the key. If you have the listings, the renters come to you. Uh, would you agree mostly with that? 
I would say yes, but also um, there are, so because I get the business, they're like my listings and then my sure. agents work all the listings. So it's just like a rainmaker scenario. But yeah. in New Haven, there's, if somebody went to Craigslist and put up a, a cool ad, was like, work with me, I can show you all of these, I think people would click on that ad. Yeah. Um, you, the difficulty with apartments is you have to have access, right? You need the keys. You need the, how do you get in? How, how do you notify the tenant? So we have mounted lock boxes on every single property we manage. Sure. So any of our agents can use the code and get in. Yeah. Yeah. So it just makes like sense. Logistics, it, logistics have to be. Um, yeah, cool. that's true. Uh, you know, here in Chicago, we have a lot of high rises where there's door people and that that's easy. You don't, you don't need any of that, but for all of the non high rise properties, um, yes, if you have the inventory, if you have the landlord or the property management company who's willing to work with you, uh, the, and they're priced appropriately and they're, and they're good, uh, good units, um, the, the tenants will show up, you know, posting ads. Um, I, I don't know where, where the uh, Craigslist here has started charging, so I don't know where people are posting these days. But. So a um, lot of Facebook, a lot of Insta, Pinterest, our software pushes to like 15 websites. Out, yeah. So like Lovely, Hotpad, Trulia. Zillow just moved to a paid platform in yes. our area. Did they it did. Move? Same they did. So, same, same with us as well. Yeah. So MLS though, we get it because we're members. So every, all of our listings are on the MLS. So it, it, we're still hitting the Zillow, but not with our software, right. which was more intuitive. I would say you be likable, be likable, yeah. be honest and hustle because yeah the client service is what people are looking for. And also like, I remember when I moved back to New Haven, I, I called around a couple, a couple agencies, like nobody called me back. So I was like, is, Oh, isn't I that, I'll doesn't that, my mom. would you, Burn as a up. business owner, would that, would you just go absolutely crazy if somebody submitted a request through your website or, and, and they didn't get a call back immediately? Like I, I'm in the same capacity. If that happened, I would go nuts. And, but I'm shocked at how commonplace it is. Um, it is. People th are overloaded, you know, yeah. people are overloaded. And it's also, you know, it's really hard to find agents that really hustle. And what, what's well, interesting it, is yeah. like, because we have the property management, half of my best agents are on full-time salary. So they have their own job. Plus right. if they want to make commission, they got to work, you know, after 4 PM and on weekends. Right. So sometimes in the end, we just say, you know what? I'll pay you your salary. Just get everything rented. Right. right. So in the end, you got to do the right thing by the owner and just put your best people out in the field. But it's really hard to find, to find people who want to hustle rentals because it's hard work. But it's also such a great opportunity to set yourself up for future sales, especially people who graduate from Yale. Now, of course, they, a lot of them move, they go all over, they go to New York, they go to Boston, they go all over, of course, the country. They're Yale grads, they have a lot of options. Um, but there's people that stick around, maybe they go to Hartford or, or wherever, but they, they, they could be even stay local. And what a great way to build the relationship now. And even if, even if they are moving to New York and even, or, or wherever, you, that still becomes a referral opportunity as well. Agreed, agreed. But you have to like, that's why I said, everybody you talk to, put them in your phone, text yes. them, hey, um, there's just not enough hours in the day, you know? Right. They're just, they're just well, that's why you- and that's why you need systems. I mean, I've told all of our agents, I don't know how many, you know, they probably don't listen to me, but I always tell them, make what, as soon as you rent an apartment, you know, the expiration date is, you know, let's say 12 months or, or 13 months, well, whatever it is, you know, when that person has to make a decision and you know, whether it's two months or three months prior, have it automatically send them an email and have it to remind you to give them a call, say, Hey, by the way, your lease is coming due. What, what are you thinking about doing? Um, and, and that, you know, or are you thinking about buying or, or, you know, do you want to move to another apartment? Are you happy where you are? You want to resign? Whatever that is, I, I suspect just like with everything, if you don't have systems in place, there's no way you're going to probably naturally remember 10 months from today that your client moved in and has got two months left on their lease. No, agreed. So I think, yeah, organization and, you know, even Google, you could do it in Google sheets, you know, yeah. which is like free. Yeah, we, I, I talked to one of the top agents here in Chicago and I said, uh, we had him on the show uh, years ago and I said, what CRM do you use? He goes, I'm embarrassed to say it. I use Google Sheets. And, and, he, and he said, I've tried all of the major CRMs. They're all great, 
But he goes, for me, I just need to look at a spreadsheet. And uh, I went, wow, what a great endorsement for Google Sheets that uh, one of the top agents, um, you know, that's all they use and they have a little system in place for it. But it doesn't even have to, I mean, that's basically a free service. And so there's lots of systems, but I, I couldn't agree more systematizing uh, the property management, also the, the tenant relationship um, and, and just, you know, the, the, yeah, I mean, everything should just be in systems or else we're all just too busy to remember. I, I also think a good piece of advice is trust your gut. Mm. Your gut, it took, me a, it took me a while to really trust my gut. Like if my gut is telling me something, it's right. And if you're true to yourself, you'll get something good will happen. So one of my first big deals, there was this guy who let me rent one of his apartments and he was a doll. And I would send himself off the MLS. I was just out on my own. And he was like, no, thank you, but keep sending. No, right. thank you, but keep sending, right? So a little rejection, but kindness. So I was at this networking event, at, specializing in commercial stuff. And this guy was like, listen, I have something on Lake Place, a six family. I said, I'll take it. I have the buyer. So as soon as it hit, he gave it to me, didn't hit the market. And I was shopping it to this guy and he was kind of playing around. And I was like, Carol, this guy's not going to buy this. You got to call, you got to call the other guy. I called him. I said, I have a super sneaky deal. He said, come in. I met with him and I left the office with a signed contract and a check for 50,000 bucks. I took it right to the other agent. He signed it, got it signed. That was my first transaction. And that building, we paid 450 for a six unit on Lake Place right behind the Yale gym. And it's worth, you know, one and a half million dollars or more today. Wow. So, and that, that client, he's my favorite client um, because he, he treats, he treated me with respect and I could trust him. And I love to do business with people that are grateful and respect the hustle. Yeah. I would rather make that guy rich than like somebody who's mean, you know? So yeah. in the end, it's just about being likable and being honest about who you are and how you want to work. And if you, and if someone is making you feel uncomfortable, you can just say, I'm really not comfortable doing that. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I think the, the willingness to walk away from a situation, whether it's a buyer, a seller, a renter, um, you know, an investor, uh, really anyone where you, you do have that weird, or, you know, for example, this could be um, a scenario where a seller has an unrealistic price expectation and they say, well, my home's worth this. And the, the data suggests that, that it, um, that it isn't worth that. And, you know, agents um, are often very afraid to walk away from a transaction because they're like, no, I'll try to make it work. And in most cases, you're not going to make it work. If your gut tells you this doesn't feel right, you know, it's, it, it's hard and it's no fun to walk away, but um, you probably should. And, and you'll find that other things happen that, that fill its spot, I'm guessing. I agree. And like the best thing for that homeowner is just to say, listen, I'd be doing you a disservice to take this listing at this price. And I want to be honest with you. And another agent's going to come in here and say, yeah, I want the business. Yep. And in the end, they'll call you back. They'll call yeah, you back yeah. because they appreciate when, the when it crashes and burns, they're going to call you back because you were the one that was honest. Um, but yeah, I think respecting the hustle is really important. Um, trusting your gut um, and being likable. You've said that a number of times. And it's, it's one of those things that is so important. And there is data to support this, that if you are an actually a likable person, um, and, and it doesn't mean you have to change who you are to be likable. So I want to make sure we're not saying you, you should, you know, throw away all your values and ethics and morals and your personality to sort of appease other people. But if you are an actually nice, likable human being, it is shocking how the world can open its doors to you. Not always, of course, but it makes life a heck of a lot easier for sure. And I think people like personalities, whoever you are, whatever yeah. you say, if it's honest, yeah. if you're on time, people yeah. will listen to you and respect you. Yeah. I would also say you, time in real estate, time is your most valuable asset. Your time, don't give it away for free. It's taken me years, taken me years to, to be better about that. But your time is your, is your biggest asset and make sure that you're, you're using it widely. 
Well, I think that's a perfect, perfect place to wrap up. I want to remind everyone who's listening, if you are a, an agent in the New Haven area and you're thinking about maybe your firm isn't exactly giving you all the resources and tools you need um, and you're looking to expand your business, uh, then uh, Farnham Group may be a great option and you can find out more. Or, or before I get to that, also, if you're a buyer, a seller, a renter, uh, a, a tenant, um, an investor, any, you know, looking for to work with a real estate company, or you're looking for somebody to manage your portfolio of investments, um, reach out to Farnham Group. They are absolute superstars in New Haven. Um, you can find them, of course, at Farnham, F-A-R-N-A-M group.com. But Carol, if there's somebody that wants to work with you specifically or someone on your team, what's the best way they should reach out? So they can text me directly, 203-671-1961, or just email me, carol at Farnham Group.com. Love to hear now, from everybody here. Thanks so much for having me on the show. It was super fun. Yeah, Carol, I really the pleasure is all ours. And we should once again mention Carol's company is the largest real estate, the largest rental agency in all of Connecticut. That is a huge, massive, massive accomplishment. So we want to congratulate you on your all your con, uh, success and your continued future success. Um, on behalf of the listeners, uh, Carol, we want to say thank you for spending time to, uh, we know how busy you are and, and how busy, um, you know, your company is and taking time to be on our show really means a lot to our listeners. And also on behalf of Carol and myself, we want to thank the listeners for continuing to listen and support our show, or you might be watching this episode as well. Thank you for that. And we just want to mention two quick things before we go, which is number one, we rebuilt our website. So check it out, keepingitrealpod.com. Um, if you're listening through a podcast app, that's great. But the cool thing about our website uh, is that if you have a specific type of one of our uh, shows that you like, for example, our social boot camp or our Monday market minute or any of the other shows we have, we have them categorized. And so if you want to go straight to those or you just want to listen to top 1% interviews, uh, top 1% broker interviews like the one we're doing right now with Carol, um, they're all categorized. You can do that right on there that you can't do on the app. So check it out, keepingitrealpod.com. And lastly, the second thing we ask is to please just tell a friend. Think of one other agent that could benefit from hearing this particular interview and send them a link to the show. Um, we're on every podcast directory. We're super easy to find. Every, you know, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, anywhere, just Google it or go to keepingitrealpod.com, but send someone that you know uh, a link to the show so they can learn from Carol and grow their business as well. But Carol, thank you so much once again. It was a real pleasure. Um, I'm excited to watch your future success and I will definitely, um, if I'm in the area, stop by and, and have by. some pizza, <laughs> some New Haven pizza okay. with you. would be great. All right. Thanks, Thanks Carol. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.